the Etando Book Club lovers. This season, we are putting the books written by your favorite African female authors center stage. And joining me in the studio as co-host is the amazing and fabulous book reviewer, Sarah Nyingarai. As is our custom, we always begin every episode with a quote from a famous African that we believe captures the spirit and message of our book discussion. Naturally, we've chosen a quote from the book we'll be discussing today. And the quote is, One never wants to believe the worst about those they love. So I did not. London, Cape Town, Joburg by Zukiswa Wana. Sarah, tell us a little bit about our author today. Thank you, Selina. Uh, Zukiswa Wana was born to a South African father and a Zimbabwean mother in Zambia. She is the author of uh, the novels, The Madams, Behind Every Successful Man. She has received the Commonwealth and Herman Charles Bosman Award and um, shortlisted um, by Men of the South. So she's the founder of Read Essay, a writer initiated campaign to get South Africans uh, reading more African literature with particular emphasis on um, locally written books to school libraries um, that she's donating and um, wherever books are unavailable, she will start a library. So she is um, also a member or was a member of the inaugural writing team for the first South African radio, Sophie in English. And um, she's also part of SA FM Radio Voca. So definitely, I think, a celebrated author, but also quite busy and strong mm. in the literary field. Um, if we look at London, Cape Town, Joburg, and um, the world created there, how did you feel about the arc of the story um, and how she just brought life to those three locations? Because the book actually split into three parts, um, which are, you know, the London part, the Cape Town part, and the Joburg part. And it starts um, like the mid-90s as South Africa is coming into its own after apartheid and takes us to kind of like the first decade of the 2000s. Okay, thank you, Selena. She chose um, central places, you know, um, iconic places that have a lot of history uh, to them. London being a place in which South Africans, some exiled to. So, and it's a well-known um, place so to speak. And then Cape Town is also iconic in uh, South African history or even present day South Africa. Joburg, the vibrant, um, fast paced. So they all are pivotal in their trajectory from one city to another. And um, I liked that um, it's symbolic to their lives as South Africans as well because they moved from um, an era of apartheid to um, freedom or independence. So she, it's colorful in that aspect. I mean, the, total, the title rather speaks for itself. So it's colorful um, and it resonates with each um, stage in their lives. They meet love in London. Um, Cape Town is where most of the marriage is. And then for personal reasons, they migrate to Joburg. So it's, 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 um, it's intentional. And I like that intentionality. Yeah, definitely intentional. Um, and speaks to the different um, seasons of life and how you move from one generation, the starter generation, into the more productive generation. We see that arc for the main characters in the book. But we're running out of time, so it's time for us to go to break. We'll be taking a short break. But we'll be back in just a few moments to continue our discussion on London, Cape Town and Joburg, written by Zuki Swawana. You don't want to miss it because this is where we get into all the juicy details. See you soon. Welcome back. You're watching the Tando Book Club and we're talking 
London, Cape Town, Joburg, written by Zuki Swawana. So Sarah, we usually get into the discussion around characters and cast. Who were your favorite and who were your least favorite? I'll start with my least favorite this time. And um, that was Martin. Mm. Martin let himself down. He let his family down. He let his son down. And um, he didn't rise to the occasion in order to protect. He may have provided, but he failed to protect. And he was passive. He just turned a blind eye. He let life happen. And what he allowed to happen um, is devastating. So he... Um, possibly nonchalant and just intentionally letting things slide. He would notice and just decide not to deal with it. He didn't confront the issues that mattered. So Martin let me down. Um, it goes without saying Liam. It goes without saying Liam is um, the perpetrator there. Um, he, he's symbolic with what's also happening in South Africa. Um, that dominance, um, the abuse, um, entitled. So perhaps both brothers were uh, my least favorite in that sense. And then I liked Jermaine. She mm -hmm. is who she is. Mm -hmm. She did well when they migrated because it's not easy to embrace a new home, new landscape, new culture. And um, she was adaptable when they moved from Cape Town to Joburg. She still um, soared and did well. And for someone who had not been exposed to South Africa, I thought that was lovely. Mm -hmm, totally. Um, I love uh, Cindy Way and Margaret, the mothers on both sides. So Cindy Way Martin's yes. mother and Margaret um, Germain's mother. Um, I love them because they are um, very amazing, sort of quietly strong mothers in the background. Both of them basically raised these two on their own. Um, and mm. in contrast to some of the other books we've discussed in the season, um, the absence of the father is literally just that. It's like just, um, it's not this defining um, thing in the lives of Jermaine and Martin. So I really appreciated that aspect of um, those two matriarchs in the back, very different women, one more politically inclined, one more artistically inclined, um, very different choices um, in life in terms of what they chose to do about love and romance and all of that, um, but strong women in their own right as individuals um, and women who I think were able to transcend or reinvent beyond that loss of this life partner um, in their lives. And so I found that very admirable um, in terms of them as cast and characters. Um, I agree with you, Martin, infirm, avoider, and uh, two words to describe it, willfully oblivious. I feel like he was willfully um, avoiding the issues in his life. What, what were some of the key lessons or life lessons for you um, about this book and about the story, from this book and about the story? Okay. Um, a key life lesson for me is tied to the coat that you read when we opened up. Um, one never wants to believe the worst about uh, those they love. Perpetrators are in our homes, mm -hmm. and that is what we get to see about the story. That, um, and it's very possible that someone can see the signs and just not want to go there. And yet the child continues to suffer and um, at a great cost. So pay attention and do something. Mm -hmm. um, don't revere a family figure or sibling because of their strength at the expense of your own children that are innocent and require you to protect. That's what a parent is there for. Mm -hmm. And it goes beyond financial provision. You are supposed to be on the lookout for the dangers and do something about it. Totally. I think um, for me, um, 
the most dangerous lie you'll face is the one you want to be true. Mm -hmm. um, and that is encapsulates Martin and Liam's story um, and everything you've said about protecting um, the people in our lives. Um, sometimes we hold on to a lie and we invite greater danger in at a great, great cost. But we're running out of time. It's time for us to go to break. Um, we'll be taking a short break, but we'll be back very, very soon. And we're going to do what we love to do on the book club, which is do a reading from the book. So stay tuned and let's hear what we're going to hear from London, Cape Town, Joburg. See you just now. Welcome back. You're watching the Tando Book Club and we're talking London, Cape Town, Joburg, written by Zaki Swawana. So, Sarah, what would you say are the unique strengths of the book? Thank you, Selina. I would say um, their migration is in tandem with how they evolve as uh, people. So that came out very well, uh, who they are in London. Um, and when the environment changes, they're also changing. Um, some segments, I would have wanted them to be longer. Mm -hmm. um, some I felt were dragged out. But um, she, they evolve with their migration. And migration is central to changing who you are. So um, you see how someone can rise to the occasion and then someone is unable to uh, rise to the occasion as they migrate uh, because there's a lot of migration. So it's a, it's a well told story in terms of um, movement and that doesn't always tie in with internal growth. Mm, totally. And I feel like the evolution of the characters and the migration also speak to the journey that the country was going in politically mm -hmm. at the time. Um, and you see this the most, I think, through the interplay between Liam and Martin and the conversations that they have, because they represent, I think, two very um, um, uh, polarized almost um, social commentaries or societal attitudes to the change from apartheid to, okay, now we, we, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And this is who we are, um, um, free, so to speak. And Martin is almost uh, pacifist to a... Fault. Liam is aggressive to a fault um, and militantly so to a fault. And the conversations they have when the book moves to Cape Town and Joburg, I think really, really, um, you know, show us that. And then Jermaine's also navigating that social landscape also, I think, represents, I think, a voice in the conversation um, and the bigger national conversation that was happening in South Africa at that time. And so I think Zakiswa Wana is very strong in terms of really um, uh, showing the, the temperature. I mean, she even refer, refers to the letter to Claire Short by Robert Mugabe during one of the scenes in the book. So very much finger on the pulse in terms of current affairs, almost journalistic, strongly journalistic so. Mm -hmm. So I think that's definitely her strength in writing and her strength in this book. Um, uh, the pacing, I think, for me is also one of the things in terms of the growing realization of what have we gotten into. Yes. So it's like the frog in the water. Mm -hmm. Like we started cold, then we go lukewarm, then we're warm, and then we're at boiling. And then we're like, how did we get here? So I found that that was very, very good because it's like from going into willful oblivion to cold, stark light. Mm -hmm. But um, we're getting to the point where we like to do a reading from the book. So you are going to read to us from this book from a part we agree is probably the strongest yes. in the book. <laughs> okay, I've chosen uh, a piece from the prologue. I felt that this book had a very strong prologue and um, it addresses an issue that um, ties in with where we are in the world today, which is mental health. So this is Jermaine Spencer. She begins, Zuko Spencer O'Malley is dead, dead via suicide at the tender age of 13. My son is dead. And I failed to notice he was troubled, 
For three days, I was too self-absorbed, so intent on changing the world that I couldn't see the pain my child was going through. What's more, he left the most hurtful message to me in his suicide note, which was nothing. He said nothing to me, a testament perhaps of how insignificant I had become in his life. The letter left on his bedside table was addressed to dear Papa. Papa, I hadn't heard him call Martin that since he was four. Martin, his dad, my husband. Dear Papa, it starts by the time you read this letter. I still get goosebumps <laughs> when I read that first page. And the prologue for me was one of the most poignant, um, you know, pictures of grief and the desperation in loss mm -hmm. um, in those moments and very well written. Um, I cried when I read it. Um, and that's actually what pulled me into the book. So thank you so much for picking that piece, Sarah. I really appreciate that. So it's been another great edition of the book club. As we've talked to London, Cape Town and Joburg, written by Tsuki Swawana. See you again next week, same time, as we celebrate yet another African female author. Until then, stay safe, stay strong, stay true and goodbye. It's a quest for spiritual fulfillment, and he believes being in India is what will give him that. But obviously the parents' perception of India, being wealthy Americans is possibly, that that's a downgrade mm -hmm. as far as they're concerned. So there's that, there's the fight. There's a fight scene in the book where the mother's trying to understand of, is this like an existential crisis? The only person she can confide in about who she truly is, is um, Nenny. Yes. Right? Jendi's who wife. Is, yeah, Jendi's wife, who's just come in from Cameroon herself after having waited a, a year or so to join um, this man that she loves deeply, who doesn't know anything of the so-called sophistication of the upper class on the New York um, side of, 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 of America, and is kind of navigating all of this and going through her own journey.